Apple have just released an update to OSX that provides long overdue trim support to third-party SSDs. For a while now, Windows users have enjoyed trim support for third-party SSDs, though Apple, until now, have only supported trim on its own OEM SSD drives installed at the time of manufacture. Now, this isn't a big deal for many owners of recent Apple desktop and laptop products since these days the storage is often non-upgradable or hard soldered onto the system board. However, many owners such as myself of older Apple products which still allow for storage upgrades to third party hard disks and SSDs will welcome this new OSX trim functionality. The recent OS X 10.10.4 update now provides users with the ability to enable trim support for their aftermarket SSD drives via the use of a command line utility called TrimForce. But before we continue, what is trim? Well, it's best to start with a basic high level overview of how data is stored on an SSD. When data is written down to an SSD, it is stored in something called a page. Pages in turn are contained within things called blocks. The pages containing data are kept track of using a block local block address or LBA for short. The best comparison is to think of the LBA as a registry which knows where all the pages containing data are located on the SSD. When data is written down to an SSD, it is written to an empty page, though when this data is deleted, the data itself is not actually erased from the page. All that happens is that the reference to the data in the logical block address, or the LBA, is removed. So over time you're left with many pages on the SSD containing leftover information, which is called invalid data. Now this, these pages here can't be written to until the entire block in which the page is located is entirely erased. So what you're left with at this point are pages on the SSD containing obsolete data which can't be written to until the entire block in which it is part of is erased. When an SSD starts running out of empty pages to write to, it then has to look for invalid pages that can be erased. Though before this can happen, all valid pages need to be re relocated off of that block onto another. And once this has, has occurred, the entire block can then be safely erased, making the pages contained within available to be written to once again. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of overhead involved with moving valid and invalid pages around and also erasing blocks of pages. So the process of involved with writing data down to an SSD isn't perhaps as straightforward as is first often thought, especially as the SSD starts to become full. So to help alleviate some of this overhead, SSD manufacturers have implemented a technology called garbage collection, which is built into the SSD's controller and is performed during idle times on the SSD. The garbage collection process helps revert the pages and data blocks back to free space again, and it does this by moving the pages contained in a block, both valid and invalid, to available space in other blocks. This then frees up the original block so the garbage collection can then erase and reset the pages in this block to empty space. By performing this garbage collection, the SSD can ensure that free space is promptly available for future data writes without having to perform any on-the-fly movement of pages and erasing of blocks. So Simon, why do we need trim I hear you say, and isn't it the same as garbage collection? Well, not really. Trim is often confused with, with uh, garbage collection, and unlike garbage collection uh, and the process involved, uh, which is built into the SSD's controller, trim is an operating system command, which occurs when a file is deleted. Trim is an important command as it informs the SSD that the location of the deleted file no longer contains data which is valid, and then works with the SSD's garbage collection process to move only the valid pages containing non-deleted data off of that block. This reduces the extra overhead of the garbage collection process moving only the valid data and their associated pages before it can then go ahead and erase the entire block. So without trim, the SSD can potentially experience slower performance the more a drive becomes full, as both valid and invalid data needs to be shifted around to free up available blocks for writing. So in short, with trim, less data is having to be copied around the SSD when freeing up space for future use, which means less overhead and also less writes and wear and tear on the SSD's memory chips, though this is less of a concern these days. So, will an SSD operate happily without the use of a trim command? Well, yeah, most definitely. Though by enabling trim, the SSD's garbage collection process can operate more efficiently. 
So, as you'll see when I run through the basic step of enabling Trim with this latest update, there's quite a lengthy disclaimer when you run the Trim Force commands, which enables the Trim support for these third-party SSDs. At the time of recording, uh, there's some debate online whether particular models of older SSDs will have potential issues in enabling this feature due to their handling of sequential Trim. Though my advice to you would be to do some research first to determine if others have had any problems with the same model of SSD that you're using, uh, if nothing else, just for your own peace of mind. So without further ado, let me take you through the very basic step involved and uh, I'll show you how I enabled it on my Mac Pro's Kingston and Crucial SSDs. Hi, I'm now going to take you through the basic steps required to enable trim support for your third-party uh, SSD within your Mac. So, first thing I'll show you is my setup here. I'm running on a Mac Pro, uh, early 2008, so it's a pretty old machine now. Still does uh, everything I want it to, and it'll run the latest version of the um, of OS X, as you can see there. So, let's just have a look at the uh, system support report, rather. Um, go down to SATA. And as you can see, I'm running four drives here in total. So the first one is a Kingston SSD. I've got a uh, two spinning disks as well. This is a Seagate from memory. Uh, and then I have my Western Digital there as well. You'll notice I'll also, I've also got a second SSD there, the Crucial. Um, but going back up to the Kingston for a second, if we look at the settings for the Kingston, you'll notice that trim support is set to no. Uh, and that is true of the Crucial as well. So uh, currently trim support isn't enabled for both of these third-party drives. Um, as I've mentioned uh, already, that this probably won't impact a lot of you that have a modern Mac of description, whether it's a laptop or a desktop at all, because a lot of the storage on these uh, later machines is either soldered um, to the board or perhaps you haven't got to the stage of wanting to void the warranty to upgrade it. Um, me personally, as you can see, my Mac Pro is pretty old here, and also the, the older style Mac Pros I actually prefer because it's much easier to get into them to add um, aftermarket aftermarket uh, disk drives such as the SSDs you see here. So you see that uh, I've shown you that the trim support isn't enabled on both at the moment. Um, so the next thing we we'll want to do is just open a terminal window like so. And then what I'm going to do is enable the super user mode like so. Um, so I'm now in super user mode and then what I'm going to do is type the command. So this is the new command uh, that came out with the 10.4.4 release of OS X. Uh, trim support and I'll show you the help. Very basic actually, there's only three commands, enable, disable and also the help as you can see. So I'm going to um, trim support enable like so. So at this point here, you've got uh, quite a lengthy important notice. So um, so basically, it's no comebacks at this point. It may impact. Um, as I mentioned at the time of recording this, uh, there are some known issues uh, with the Crucial. I've done a little bit of homework on mine. I'm pretty sure mine will be OK, uh, and also Samsung's as well. But this will be something, no doubt, that will be addressed in time, probably by the time you read this. So ask you whether you want to proceed. Um, like I say, I highly, highly recommend that you back up your drives at this point, uh, well, prior to this point, um, because obviously if something does go wrong, you want to roll back again. So here we go. So it's going to ask whether um, I want to reboot. Once it's complete, I'm going to say no, because I'm obviously uh, recording that. Ah, OK, so there we go. That's interesting. So do you wish to proceed? Yes. OK, you've got to put yes in there. If you put no, then it actually cancels everything. So uh, chances are um, <laughs> I'm going to click yes now and then I'll uh, come back after it's been enabled. OK, the machine's now rebooted itself. That took around about uh, three minutes, four minutes from this completing to it doing the reboot coming back online again. Pleased to report everything's come back. Uh, all my drives uh, appear to be there still, which is great. Um, so let's let's go back to the to the system report here. Uh, as you can remember, um, when we had a look previously, the SSD drives didn't have uh, trim support enabled. So let's have a look at the Kingston first. As you can see, trim support is now enabled on the Kingston. And let's take a look at the Crucial. And same with the Crucial as well. As you can see, trim support uh, enabled for both. So fantastic news for people such as myself running uh, older uh, Apple Macs, whether that's a Mac Pro such as this or maybe a, a MacBook Pro. Uh, I had one of those until recently. And um, yeah, I was running a third party SSD drive in there as well. So uh, yeah, well done, Apple. Um, good update. Uh, and uh, 
yeah, let's let's hope it's stable. All reports so far uh, that I've read, um, everyone's indicating that it work, works well. So um, no, I look forward to that extra functionality um, on my Mac Pro now. So uh, I hope you found this video of use. If you did, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving it a thumbs up, that would be much appreciated. Thanks very much.